I've been doing this tech transfer science delivery stuff for a long time, and I noticed uh, a couple years ago that there, there really is sort of a, a thread or a magic ingredient uh, that makes this work. There's all kinds of things that work, and some work better than others and, and that, but there's kind of a, a super tool, and this is a tool in the very broadest kind of sense. But, um, and here's the things we want. Science delivery, tech transfer, diffusion of innovation is what the tech transfer geeks call it. Uh, science application, uh, they called it boundary spanning when I was hired. Uh, morale, you want good morale, ret retention of young employees. Do you want meaningful work? Who doesn't want their work to be meaningful? Conservation of institutional knowledge, high performance teams, check. Continuity of scientific in inquiry and scientific lineage. You know, who's gonna catch the ball when Ron Nielsen punts? I'm worried about that. We need a robust capacity to respond to climate change. We need reliable decision support, persistence of lessons learned, refinement of best practices, effective knowledge management, shared learning. We do our best work when we're having the most fun, no doubt about it. And this is what this talk was supposed to be about, an antidote to climate change fatigue and filter failure. So do you want all these things? What am I talking about? It's a very important phenomenon. It's often under the radar, particularly the executives, although I know Dave Cleave gets this. Nobody started it. There's no organizational charts, there's no charters, there's no budget allocation, there's no enabling legislation. It's guided, but it's never bound. It works across boundaries, generations, cohorts, agencies, ownerships, even nations. It's unquenchable, it's tireless, and it's a big part of the coming world. What am I talking about? The communities of practice. If we want robust, effective knowledge management. We cultivate the communities of practice and they do it for you. Communities of practice are organized around things that matter to people, shared interests and experience, vivid stories, sustained interactions. It's how we build and sustain relationships. It's how we learn from each other. It's one reason those thinking exercises worked so well. It's how we develop a shared repertory of resources. Yeah, websites are fine, but the that repertoire develops from the community of practice and is a beautiful combination of excitement and familiarity. So how do we get it? Well, you don't create these, they already exist, but you can cultivate them. And what works to cultivate them? All sorts of things. And I'm, I don't have time to go into it, but basically everything works. Everything you try to do this works. The video that we have now in the Forest Service very, very helpful if you use it right. The social media, the collaborative sites that I talked about, uh, the wiki, they're basically wikis. Very, very effective if we'll just use them. The Facebook type phenomenon. How, uh, many of you on Facebook? Yeah, you might roll your eyes about it, but it's an immensely important and transformative uh, thing that's happening. But really at the end of the day, it's the face-to-face -face meetings that really are essential, and you have to have those occasionally. And um, one of the things that I'd like to mention uh, is that the target of opportunity when we're short of money is always to cut back on travel. And uh, I was in Region 3 uh, last week and we were talking about this wonderful national meeting we had in 2004 that really jump-started the community of practice in earth sciences. And, they, and, the, and the people told me, well, we can't even meet as a region anymore. You know, we just don't have the money to do that. And I would submit that that's exactly wrong and if you prevent people from getting at each other, all these things that you accomplish with the community of practice, they all are damaged. They all won't work as well. And we can measure how much money we spend on travel. These other things are harder to measure. And so if we can find other ways to save money or to take a good look at, at where we are traveling and which ones tend to promote the community of practice and which ones less so, and look for that establishment of those, the, the, those networks. Um, I think that would be really, really important. And it's a, here's, um, here's probably a one good way of saying it that Bonnie Ilhart from Region 9 said, and I'm almost done. Um, so if we look for the essence of good science-based stewardship, um, which is really what our charge is, what our responsibility is, 
ability is. It's not websites or guidebooks or DVDs or videos or posters. These matter. Um, and those of us that build tools will continue to do that, and we hope that people will find them to be useful. Uh, but in the end, as Dave Cleves said just before lunch, it's the people, the relationships, the shared knowledge, the shared practice. It's the community of practice that makes it real. And it's hard to know what kind of picture to put up on the screen uh, when you're talking about this, but wait a minute. There it is. It's us. <laughs> so let's make it real.